Hey everybody, this is going to be our surround sound tutorial just to get you started in logic on how to get things working in 5.1. So first of all, I'm going to assume that you have your hardware all set up and if you didn't take my tutorial in class then you're kind of on your own with that. But one place to start is to go to your audio MIDI setup which I can find an easier way. There we go. I'm using the Apogee Quartet. Go to your output, configure your speakers, and what you want to make sure is that you have everything set up to the right output. So typically we do left front line one, right two, center is three, sub is four, right surround or left surround is five and right surround is six and that corresponds to the board in the in the lab which you will see in our tutorial so you can close that up then in your logic session go to your audio and then you're going to go to your io assignment and it has a surround setting here um, if you don't see this, it's possible you need you may need to go to um, advanced tools, turn that on. Otherwise, it should be there, and you can set it up for a bunch of different types. We're using 5.1, and you just want to make sure the same speakers go to the out same output here, so that you're not dealing with any you know any different uh, outputs going to different speakers. All right, then probably want to try checking it. And I'm going to mute it real quick because I'm going to use the test oscillator, which is hidden our utility. And we're just going to do, we'll do a mono for now. All right. And I hit the X key to bring up my mixer. Oops, it went away. All right. I'm going to turn it on to white noise. I'm just going to turn it down. You may, you, you're probably not going to hear it very well in the recording, but the white noise is good at locating speakers. And so you're going to turn this on when you're at the station it's just to test if your speakers are going where they should. And you change your output. Actually change this to turn these off. And we're going to change this to a mono so that should be going out your left your right your center uh, you get the point right your your sub and you're not hearing that probably at all your surround left and right Okay, and basically the idea is that it's coming all out around the same level. And if it's not, you can adjust it on your hardware. All right, so I'm going to just delete this track. We don't want to look at it anymore. Okay, so I'm going to mostly deal with this track here. And this is going to be, for example, our an audio track of any kind. And let's... um. Let's just pull a loop in here, see if I can find some vocal. All right. Nice. Um, let's do... <laughs> sure, why not? All right. So, I'm going to put that in there. All right, so right now it's coming out our stereo output. Um, what we're going to do first, before we actually get everything, um, all of our audio dragged in or recorded, is I'm going to make a few auxiliary channel strips. I'm going to make four, actually. Okay, and then I'm going to name this one, I'm going to name center. That's the sub. 
that's our rear left and our rear right. All right, so for these, I'm going to change the output to surround. And one thing that that does is it automatically turns our master into a surround channel. So that's good for us because then we, when we bounce it, it should turn into a surround. And then in the ones that we changed to surround, now we have this little kind of panning thing that allows us to move in a circle. I'm going to hard pan those to the appropriate speakers. Our center channel probably should be considered mono and go directly to our sub. We don't need that to be a stereo channel. All right, so we have that set up and then our center channel also can be mono and it can um it could be a surround and you just push it right to that center channel there or you could also make it go directly to channel three which is normally our center channel so either way works now we can control by turning these into buses. Bus 1, bus 2, bus 3, and bus 4. Now we can send any of our audio tracks to any of our channels um, independently. Everything will kind of automatically go out stereo, which is good if you um, ever want to bounce it down to a stereo version and have both surround and stereo with more or less one mix um, or you can basically um, have two more buses for left and right and then just turn the stereo out, out down and then get rid of all output assignments to stereo out. It's really up to you and how you want to do it but this is a way now that we can um, take our vocalized bass and it can go out the stereo out, but it can also, we can send it to our center channel through a bus and turn that up. So now when I hit play, it should be coming out our center channel as soon as I do that. There we go. So now I hear it out the left, the right, and the center. Well, if I don't want it going out left and right, I can just simply send it to the center channel. And now this goes straight to our center channel. Okay. And I can get rid of this altogether. But if I wanted it to go to multiple channels, then I can set it up to go to different sends. So I could send it to the low frequency oscillator or effect, which is our sub. And now, now we have a little more bass. In fact, you probably shouldn't mess with these. Just hit option click and get them all zero to unity. And let's say if I wanted it to just go to like the rear speaker, I can add in another bus. Now it should be going to bus 4 here. Okay, so you want to make sure that whenever you do this, to just isolate the sounds, make sure they're coming from where they, where they should be by either muting the channels or turning the buses off. Okay, and then to make certain that they're coming out the right speakers and that you have all this set up properly, that you have your panning set up and everything so that when you finally go to the mix, it's gonna sound exactly the way that it was um, mixed in Logic. All right, so now you can also add in, this is the last little bit, I'll try a software instrument in case you want to add music to your track. You can add in s surround channels in 
your mix and then you can use automation to move them around so let, we'll just find some uh, music here we'll find some MIDI I don't even know what this is All right, so now I can uh, sort of just, just loop this. So you can kind of hear it move around. You're probably not hearing much of that, but it's gonna, you can au automate this using automation. Just like you automate anything, you can do your pan there. And it's gonna give you Panning option. Actually, that wasn't the right pan. That's the right pan. Here. So anyway, um, you can play around with the the panning options and all that stuff, and you you know you should know how to do automation by now. But that's how um, we're gonna think about mixing our surround sound is to use auxiliary channels sent to or assigned to buses and optional you can use surround channels as your um, left rear right, left and right um, you could also s convert your stereo out to surround if you really wanted to I'm sorry your master will convert to surround um, automatically you could convert m two more auxiliary channels to be stereo surround if you wanted those to be left and right um, but you want to make sure that each channel is more or less accounted for in, in your bus and then you bus them for each place you want it to go so if I wanted these to go to the rear the music to go only to the rear I would bus them here and then turn those up and then I start hearing those at the rear channels as opposed to just the front channel okay and you can do the same thing down here more directly if you don't want them to bleed in or don't want to use this as your controller to which speaker it can go to because you can move the music around to different speakers using these channels using mono or stereo channels they have to go directly to the speakers that they're being sent to okay and that also helps that if you wanted to put some sort of um, I don't know EQ on your on your sub or some sort of uh, you know uh, reverb on the rear channels that you could do that for everything that's being sent there okay this is a lot easier than working with only surround channels um, because you have a little more control over where the sounds can go and how isolated they are and you don't have to deal with a bunch of uh, automation to um, make sure that they all are going straight to the center channel or to the rear left you can just simply um, assign it there directly all right, so the last little bit, you should know how to import your movie. And this is one I grabbed off the BBC. It might bark about your frame rate. To change that or to work with your frame rate, you just go to your movie preferences. And, and it's going to be under sync. And you can change your, adjust your frame rates here. You can set up your um, playback. If you have an offset, you can set it here. That's another f um, another tutorial that we've done. You can also um, open up your big counter if you want to, like you can customize your display. Um, whatever you want to set this up. In fact, probably better if you have two screens to put your movie file on a different screen, off screen, and you can look at it while you have this all on your main screen. But for now, I'm just gonna bury that. All right, well, you've done your mix. You have your surround master. When you go to export the movie, now it should allow you to, this should be about right. Make sure those are all set. It should then let you, oh, um, yeah. Bounce it straight to surround. And I think it's here.
Well, in my system, that's playing back as surround. Um, hopefully, it will play back in yours. QuickTime, as well as VLC player, should be able to just straight up play bounce surround files. But it should all be encased in your movie file without any other issues. All right, there you go, folks. Surround in a nutshell. Get to it.